Good morning, good morning, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is the day the Lord has made. Be sure to rejoice and be glad in it. I pray, my brothers and sisters, you are as grateful and as excited as I am that God allow you and I another day, another day for you and I to worship Him as spirit and truth. And that's enough to give Him glory, honor, and praise. For my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you, you, and you for joining us. We worship God today in spirit and truth through by the Word of God. I don't know about you, but my brothers and sisters, the Word of God is the source of our strength. When the Word of God tells us, although the outer man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day, and is renewed our inner man of the Holy Spirit day by day by the Word of God. My brothers and sisters, we can see ourselves being ye steadfast, our mover always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain, and is well pleasing in the eyesight of God. My brothers, I want to encourage you from the Word of God today from Psalm 1. Psalm 1 today. Am I a blessed man? Am I a blessed man? A blessed man or woman of God? We're not talking about just gender. We're talking about both genders, male or female, created in the image of God. The Word of God tells us that for any man being Christ, behold, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become anew. And that's one of the promises for us is to be a blessed man or woman of God. My brother and sister, we are touching the grave of prayer. I believe God to do only what God does. And that is still continue to save, heal, deliver, and empower the people of God and leading God us. Through by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit for all of those that are born again with believers and the kingdom of God. Always the Holy Father, we magnify and glorify your holy name, for you alone are worthy. There's no other God like you. There's no other God greater than you. We thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father that never sleep will never slumber. Our Heavenly Father always attuned into the hearts and minds of your people. We thank you, God, for being the one that's all knowing and all seeing. That God will look at our hearts and not our outer appearance as man does. So look down deep within our hearts, God. Grant us what we are in need of this day to continue. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high call in Christ Jesus that awaits us, that are waiting for that great assurance of your return one day. But God, we thank you even now. We thank you for your people of God, the word of God, and the anointing of God that destroys every bind of you. We freely welcome you, Lord God, to have your, as is liberty and freedom in Christ Jesus, we give you the liberty and freedom to have your will and way in our lives. Through by the power, the power of your Holy Spirit. That you said will make intercession for us and we don't even know what to pray. That will lead and guide us. That will teach us all things. Will bring all things back to our members in time of need. So we thank you even now God for your anointing that destroys the bad and you ignore our ear gates, not our eyes, and not our hearts. That your word through by the transforming power will transform us God into the image of God, heaven and mind of Christ. And we do like Apostle Paul encourage the church of the, the Roman believers and those that Rome at that time. To present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and up to you, Mr. Abuse, Mr. We be not conformed to this world, Lord God, but we be transformed through by the renewing of our minds, through by the power of the Holy Spirit, and through by the Word of God and your anointing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, am I a blessed man? Are you a blessed man? I tell you, I thank God for the Psalm. Psalm 1, um, we know Psalm 1, the beginning, the first, um, chapter psalm is, is really the foundation for the whole book of psalm. Uh, we know it's one of the largest books in the Bible, but we know that um, it's a off branch um, as to what we're looking forward to even when you read the books of psalms. Um, how that you'll see is dealing with the godly man, the ungodly man, and also God himself, the creator of heaven, the earth, and the universe, the one that says that heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word shall forever stand. So we see in my brothers and sisters, Psalm 1, um, it tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of a scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring up forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And I a blessed man. 
We see in my verses according to the psalm how it's telling us how we can be blessed. We know how um, even um, when Jesus did the Sermon on the Mountain, he did the blessed, to the be attitudes. And this should be our attitude here in Psalm 1. This should be our attitude as now being new believers in Christ. How he says, blessed is the man that we don't walk in the counsel of ungodly. Nor we stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat for the scorn. For the word of God is telling us that we now, as believers and godly beings in the body of Christ, we should not be taking ungodly counsel. Meaning, the counsel of the world, and the word of God tells us to be in the world, but not of the world. Meaning that, yes, we know we're living in this earthly realm, but now we've been born again of the Spirit of God. We are supernatural beings born of the Spirit of God, and we should not take ungodly counsel. That only means that we should not live the way of the world, the simple nature that was born in, the simple ways that we live, even not only in that even though we fellowship, it's not saying we can't fellowship with sons. The word of God tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But what it's telling us that let's be in the world but not of the world, but not influenced by the sinful and evil wickedness of the sinful nature that we was born with that we've been delivered from. And then the sinful nature that others have not been delivered from. If we're going to be amongst unbelievers, we should be there more so to be a witness. To be a, le a witness in reference to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in reference to holiness. And even the scornful, we know how we should not even mark God. Whenever we um, are walking and living a life contrary to the word of God and we are um, following the dictates of individuals that don't even believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior, don't even believe in God, don't even believe in the Holy Spirit, don't even believe in Jesus Christ himself. My brothers and sisters, we are on dangerous ground. So this is based on what he's saying. When it said, don't follow the ungodly counsel, stand in the way of sinners or the way of scornful. Because even when someone mocked God and used God in the name in vain, we should tell them. We should be able to encourage them. Don't use the name of the Lord in vain because you bring condemnation and judgment upon yourself. We should fear for them that their life could be, be taken at any moment in a cycle. In a second for blaspheming in the name of God. But we see here what the key is, the foundation to a blessed man or a happy man, a woman, boy or girl, God. Uh, we see how that um, we should meditate upon the law day and night. It, and I know a lot of us, we know along under Mosaic law, but even though we know that God chose the people, how they was under Mosaic law, but my brother says, whatever the law or the commands or the instruction of God's word is, that's what we should be what? We should be meditating upon. Meditating is just not constantly reading, reading, reading. Meditation is just more so reading, studying, cross reference. Like I said, sit, sit down and speak. Like I said, how you think life times over. Sit down and just meditate on the promise of God, the blessings of God. We want to be blessed. This is how we be blessed. And we can see here how also how that um and Joshua, how um Joshua's encouraged in Joshua 1 7 through 8, he said, Only be thou strong and very courageous, and thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So we see in my brothers and sisters how that we should be, what, be meditating upon the word of God, even um, in the New Testament, all that was the Old Testament scripture, the word of God tells us, the study shall itself approve unto God. A work that need not to be ashamed, but right divine the word of truth. And that's how we can grow and meditate upon the word of God. Because the word of God has power all by itself. Because we see here, when the word of God, so all scripture is given by inspiration of God's prophet doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. The man of God be thoroughly furnished every perfect and every good work. Through by the meditation, and not only meditating upon the word, obeying the word. <laughs> We just don't need to meditate. We need to obey the word of God. Because when we see here that we own oh, the word of God, it's not only hearers of the word of God, but those who deceive not ourselves, then we walk in obedience to the word of God. We can see how the promise and how that the psalm is relating um, the godly to a tree. When you talk about how a tree is planted by the rivers of life and how that it what? It Best to bring forth fruit in their season. We should be what fruit bearers. And we know how it is, my brother and sister. You see a fruitful helper tree when right there at the rivers of waters and the leaves are flourishing and they're pretty and green and you can tell that it's life in the tree by the leaves. Um 
and it's by the wood of life, not like the fig tree. The fig tree, you know, when Jesus came past, and although he was hungry and could have eaten from the fig tree, and the tree was flourishing and beautifully, but had no figs because it wasn't in its right, well, it wasn't bearing fruit in the season that it should be. So we need to see, yes, it's a time and season for everything, but we see here, when we're relating ourselves to burn fruit, that we should not wither. We know, my brothers and sisters, that even that, when we want to bear fruits and we want to stand on the promise of God's word, we want to decree and declare God's word in faith, let's be fruit bearers. A fruit bearer of righteousness. <laughs> let's be like a fruitful tree to show that's properly nourished. And that's how it is with us as believers when I say, Am I a blessed man? When we are walking in the godly counsel of God, the godly counsel of God is the word of God. That's what we're saying. The godly counsel is the word of God. Because God said Himself, He said, In the beginning it was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we are living a fruitful life and we are one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will be bearing fruit here in the earth. Fruits of righteousness mean that we're living our life according to the word of God that we can stand. That we can stand still and see the salvation. Or we can stand still and in the village can know what the word of God says above all things will be possible. And be in health even as our soul prospers. And our soul prospers through by the word of God. And that's God that counts us. So we see here that it tells us the ungodly is contrary. So it's telling us the ungodly is going to what? Listen to the counsel of the ungodly. They're going to what? Stand in the well of sinners. They're going to sit in the seat for some, because they're ungodly. But it should not be that for the godly. And we're talking about the godly. We're talking about those that are born again and feel the spirit of God. We're talking about those that are the righteous God. We're talking about the saints of God, the followers of God, those that are a part of the kingdom of God now that we've been born again of the spirit of God. But those that are, are the ungodly are not saved. Or they saved and what? Being carnal minded. But before I get into further, I'm to remind you that we too, at one point, we may be um, followers of Christ now and godly and the righteous of God, but guess what? We were born ungodly. <laughs> we were conceived in sin throughout the generation of curse from Adam, from even at the beginning of time, even when our parents conceived us in sin, we've been born in sin, and like Jesus told Nicodemus, that we must be born again. What's born of flesh is flesh, and what's born of spirit is spirit. So we, like he told Nicodemus, Mama, not, you must be, you gotta be, no other way, born again. <laughs> the other spirit and other word of God. My brother and sister, I thank God for the word of God, because what we're saying is, that God and those truly been born. Now, um, we see here how that the ungodly is like the chaff. You know, like the hus, um, it's just like the wind. It gets into you, it's thrown up in the wind, it just blows away. So it's like of no value, of no worth. I mean, have no uh, stability. The word God tells us a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we see here, that's what we're like. If we like the chaff, we ease the blow. Like I said, to the left, to the right. And that's why the Word of God tells us that we should, the gift is for the body of Christ, is that we should equip saints for the work of the ministry, that to be coming to the unit of faith. Mean this for the perfecting of the saints, that we don't be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine, um, every teaching, everything somebody said. That's why we need to know the Word of God, because we see Him. It also it says that, Therefore, the ungodly judgment day, the word of God tells us, the man's point once God and judgment day is coming. Judgment day is coming, but we see here how it says, even the ungodly shall not stand in judgment or what? Also the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. He could God himself. He said, judge ye not, for he's the judge. He's going to judge himself. The word of God tells us, therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But whoever don't believe in the, the name of the Son of God, he's condemned already. So what I'm saying is, what judgment is going to stand for? Just stand and know that you're sentenced, even when the angels come back. The harvest, the reapers, <laughs> the, the, the reap here in the earth. Take it to whichever destination you go, whether it's going to be heaven or hell. So we see here that God's going to do the separation himself. He's going to do the separation himself. And that's what separates uh, us now, the godly and the ungodly, is because we've been born again. Because the word of God tells us, all have sinned and fallen short of the word of God. And for the wages is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. So we got to be born again to really truly experience what it means to be blessed. What it really means to be happy. What it means to be 
prosper. The word of God tells us as we continue to grow in wisdom and stature in God's word, we will see favor in God and mankind. I don't know about you, my brothers. I love having the favor of God. I love and have the favor of mankind according to the word of God. So we see here, no matter which man, the ungodly or the godly, the righteous, the one that's following godly counsel, or the unrighteous that's following ungodly counsel, no matter what the Lord said, he knows in verse 6, he knows the way of both. Because it tells us, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Just how we see here, according to the word of God, am I a blessed man? Am I a blessed woman, boy or girl? We know by the word of God. That's why, my brothers, when we look in the word of God, look at the mirror of God's word, we can know what God planned and purposes for our life in earth. We can know what's going to come upon us in the earth. And we can know why we're going through what we're going through because we're looking in the word of God, who he is himself, which embodied us. But we just got to what? Study and what? Meditate upon the word of God. Because we see here that our false doctrines, um, prophets, teachers, all kind of giftings in the earth today that are not according to the word of God, but we won't know different unless we study the word of God and most of all obey the word of God. But most of all, like Jesus told Nicodemus, we got to be, must be, no other way but be born again. Because we see here. So um, Psalm 119, um, one tells us, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Who walk in the Lord? The word of God tells us, Jesus Christ, he did not come to do with the law or the prophets. The law and the prophets of Moses, but we know how um, grace and truth is by Jesus Christ himself. So we know he didn't come to do away with the law. And that's why we need to know the whole counsel of God. We need to know Genesis and Revelation, because when we study the Word of God in the New Testament, a lot of times it references um, Old Testament scriptures. Um, it may not be taught us per se as believers in Christ, but it's letting us know that even we have to realize, although um, we see here, even a lot of times when the Word of God is speaking, death in the Old Testament to His chosen people, a lot of times individuals say, well, He's not talking to us. But my brother sister. God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. And I believe Psalm 1 is still what? For you and I on today. Because even we know, according to the word of God, that even up in the New Testament, it reference about Psalms. Um, even in Colossians 3.16, it tells us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms and hymns, and spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know how I said, how can we sing a new song in a strange land? Just says, sing unto the Lord a new song. The Holy Spirit, we may not be great songs, but I tell you, sometimes, even myself, I'm sure you didn't count it. Sometimes you have your devotional time, your prayer and praise and worship, and tapping into the presence of the God and feeling His glory, that you find yourself singing in the Spirit, or you find yourself singing in, um, a new song and words that you can understand. The Holy Spirit just give you words to say. And and you may not be one of the greatest songs that may not be um, making a lot of top hits. But guess what? As long as it's pleasing and they're hearing our Lord and Savior the Redeemer. Because he said he inhabited the praises of his people. We should worship him in spirit and truth. And I tell you, we cannot worship him in spirit and truth unless we are walking in the righteousness of God's word. My brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us. If there's any sin in our lives, the only thing we need to do, he said, we confess our sins. He's faithful. He's faithful and just forgive us of our sins that cleanse us of all our righteousness. My brothers have to realize that we, there, the same way as there's a godly man and a godly man, there's only two destinations. Um, we can make up our mind that we can um, live for God or we can continue to live according to the prince of the air, Satan himself, who's the father of the world, that God has given him that authority, but God is above all authority. He said, we rise not against flesh and blood, against prince of power, spiritual because in high places, even rules of darkness, but God is above them all. So we see here, the two destinations, we can make up our mind, do we want to go to the broad gate, <laughs> or which is the wide gate, that leads to eternal destruction, or we want to go on the narrow gate, the straight gate, which is the night way to lead to eternal life. And that comes from us living a life of holiness. The word of God tells us 
that be ye holy, for I'm the Lord your God, I'm holy, and host thou shall no man see God. And when he says shall no man see God, he said we have to be godly, meaning we should be what? Walking in obedience to the word of God. Because we see, my brothers and sisters, when I think about um, Psalm 92, 12 through 14, it says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Do you see? I got to read that again. Because the word of God tells us we need to learn to number our days and apply our hearts and our lives into the wisdom of God. Because the word of God tells us we don't all have to die at an early age. We need to learn how to die. I do it myself. Decree and declare. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. We did our time. We see people living 70, 80, 90, and in the 100. He promised three score and 10, 70. But with reason of help, I tell you, people that are eight and nine, I'm believing God for long life. And long life, not just to be here in existence in the world, but making a difference, living a life dedicated unto the Lord, that he be magnified and glorified. Psalm 92, 12 through 14, again, said, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fit and flourishing. My brothers, I'm not just talking about physically and weight, but flourishing because of the word of God within us. My brothers and sisters, when the word of God tells us heaven and earth shall pass away, his word shall ever stand. And the only way we can stand these last perilous days and evil days, that's a day every day. The word of God said they're evil thereof, but he got it all in control. The only way we're going to be able to stand is to stand on the word of God and the promise of God. And and only way we can do that, we got to know the word of God says, because we know also how in Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, said, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out for roots, her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from you. Isn't this something? I tell you, word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these other things should be added unto us. The what we need to eat, what we need to drink, what we need to put on. He said, don't even worry about the evil thereof of the next day. Because the evil thereof is going to take care of itself. And this is why we need to seek after God. He said, they that seek if there's not this righteousness be him. Meaning we got to seek and desire. To want to live whole a life committed unto the Lord. And that's the only way we can be planted like these trees. I tell you, I got awed when I saw how a tree planted by the rivers of water, even when the heat come, and it does even affect it. You know how lots of time when we had summertime or times of the year that it's droughts, it's dry, and it's famine, and individuals, they didn't have enough water, I tell you, um, this year. We know in some areas, they didn't have enough water um, to what? Harvest in their crops to even feed their cattle that they had to sell them or put them down because they didn't have the, the proper amount of water. People are praying for rain, and then some place they get too much rain, <laughs> they're getting flooded. So, what I'm saying, my brother and sister, you're talking about a tree planted by the river of life, no matter how hot it gets, no how much heat comes, that tree is still flourishing because guess what? Supernatural divine that God is still making provision for that tree. That's why our foundation, our foundation is believers that God's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God tells us He's the way, He's the truth, He's the life. There's no way to the Father except through by the Son, Jesus Christ. And when we believe in that God's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, like they said, every leaning tree is not the first one to fall. My brothers, as we know, we are quickened through by the Holy Spirit. And that's why the word of God tells us, Great is He is in you and I. They heat it in the world. He's talking to the Holy Spirit. So as long as we have the Holy Spirit of God in within us, as long as we're standing and obeying the word of God and walking in his righteousness and walking in the godliness of God, we know that my brother, we shall stand. He said, in spite of trials, tribulation, persecution, temptation, he tells us to be stand, what? Be steadfast, unmoved, always abound in the work of the Lord for as much as we know our labor is not in vain. Even when it comes to being in the midst of the ungodly, he said, let the wheat and tan dwell together. He will do the separated. Judgment day is coming. But we know that we, as long as we remain in the righteous God, we should what? 
be going in what? The straight and narrow gate. It says very few going that way. Lord, glory be to God. It says very few going that way. I pray many will go the right direction. But I tell you one thing. I'm going to stay in the right, in the narrow gate. <laughs> and continue. Press my way. And that's my prayer for you, my brothers and sisters. Realize, am I a blessed man? And you can see here, according to the word of God, it's too often we look for how uh, people try to identify each other as being blessed with how much money you have, the job you have, um, your health, or your material possession. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, a lot of individuals um, today, no matter how I look on the outer appearance or how you look on the outer appearance, my brothers and sisters, if we are not born again of the water and the spirit of God and walking obedience to God's word and exemplifying the life of Christ in the earth, we are not truly a blessed man, woman, or boy, girl, God. It's not in our material possession. But what we need to do in the midst of the time that we're in and make sure we remain in the blessing of God. It's, and also, it's not about feelings. It's not about feelings. It's about faith. Our faith in God. And the same way these trees and grass and the fowls of the air can't provide for themselves, God can provide for them. How much more will he not provide for us? We have to keep the faith and make sure we are walking in the righteous God. That anything anything that we decree and declare out of the word of God, that it be so. He said, the fervent prayers of the righteous obey as much. And since he said, the fervent prayers of the righteous obey as much, he's talking about those of us that are born again. Those that are walking according to the admonition of God's word. Because we see here, there's only two directions. Knowing that, there are only two kind of mans. The only two kind of men. We have the natural man. The word of God said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. All things become new because we're new creatures in Christ. But as he said in, the, in John, the third chapter, he said, that is born of the flesh, is born of the flesh, which is a natural man. That is which is born of the spirit, and the spirit man. But also, we see here that the carnal man has two hats. Has one, two hats, in a sense. Because the carnal man still wants to live in the flesh and live in the spirit. We cannot be double-minded. So the carnal man is still the spirit man that's born again, but not growing in spiritual maturity and obedience to the whole counsel of God. And the spiritual man is, is maturing more to spiritual growth. They're both spiritual, but the thing that's spiritual growth, that's why when we first accept Christ as our Lord and Savior Redeemer, we're the ungodly man before we're born again. After we're born again, we're the godly man. But as we and the God and the carnal man, because we have to grow, and that's what the word of God is saying about a carnal man, more like a baby in Christ, just spiritually growing. I've been saved for years, but guess what? I am still growing according to the word of God, but I, I am a spiritual being, spiritual woman of God. He should be a spiritual man, woman, boy, girl, of God. But we should be growing, we should be be learning and growing. Now, the thing is that sometimes what's happened. We have got saved, we got we repent of our sins, we got baptized, we feel the Holy Spirit of God, and we get our name written in the Lamb Book of Life, and we just go to church, Sunday school, Bible study, fellowship service, worship service, but we don't spend time to grow in our spiritual growth as new creatures in Christ. And so what we remain, we can be um, saved 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but if we don't go past salvation, salvation is the foundation as being new creatures in Christ. But we need to be growing to, to spiritual maturity that we can learn how to know the voice of God. He said, my sheep know my voice, know the voice they shall obey. Not only that, we should be growing more in our spiritual knowledge of the word of God and our way of walking obedience to the word of God. It shouldn't be, yes, the word of God tells us all of sin and follow of the glory of God. And um, if we confess our sins, if faith just forgives us of our sins and cleanse us of all righteousness, we say we have no sin, but life truth is not in us. And that's true. But we need to realize, my brothers and sisters, we should sin less. We should be sinning less than what we've been sinning when we first believed. And like when we, when I'm saying, am I a blessed man or a woman, boy, girl, God, we see here, if we're walking in ungodly counsel, standing in the way of sinners and sitting in the seats of the scornful, we are not truly blessed. Because guess what? We are not in relationship with the blessed giver. God himself. He said every good and perfect gift come from above. And the, the thing of this, although every good and perfect gift come from above, we need to realize we are gifts here in the earth, not just unto ourselves, but to the world. <laughs> That's how he said in John, he said that Jesus Christ, he's the light of the world, he's the light of men. Meaning that now, now that we've been born again of the Spirit of God, now we're spiritually, we have the light of Christ within us. That's why he tells us. 
Let our light so shine for men they should see our good works and should glorify our Father which are in heaven. Because now that we're the blessed man and woman of God, uh, we need to see here, we should realize that we're a blessing to the earth. So we should be an example for the earth, to people in the world to follow like someone was a guy for us. We know Jesus Christ himself is the foundation of God for us. But we know here, Jesus Christ is now in heaven on the right hand of the Father, still interceding for you and I. He still is communicating to you and I through by his word and through by the Holy Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit will pray and intercede on our behalf. We'll bring things back to our members in time of need, leading to God's to all truth. And so that's why we have the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why that now that we are born again believers in God, and we believe in that God is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now we are um, sons and daughters in the kingdom of God because what? We are born of the Spirit of God. But where do we go from here after this foundation of our salvation? We have to go in spiritual maturity in the Word of God because we have spiritual gifts that He's given us to use here in the earth for the edification of the body of Christ and the building up of the kingdom here on earth. But we got to go from just being saved. Now we need to grow in our spiritual maturity. Not only that, it helps correct the Word of God, it helps correct our character. Um, um, even the habits, the, the, the sins and the bondage and the strongholds that had us bound that we've been freed from in order not to be in bondage to sin again, we got to grow in the Word of God that we can stand in the promise of the Word of God that we, the Word of God tells us sanctify us throughout the truth of His Word. How can we self deliver ourselves and sanctify ourselves um, outside the Word of God? God said His Word is quick and powerful and sharper and it to His sword. Parents and even the Bible of Son of Soul Spirit join them out as a journal of the thoughts and tests of the hearts. We have to realize that us is not a new creatures in Christ and no longer the ungodly man, but the godly. We got to now know the Word of God and how can we remain godly? <laughs> That's the, we got to remain godly because He's on the pure and harsh see God. Meaning that since He's on the pure and harsh see God, it has to be a purification process. And the first work first is our salvation. Now we give God, like I say, give God something to work with. Now that we repent of our sin and believe in the gospel and feel the Holy Spirit of God, now we're studying and obeying the word of God. That's how we get empowered to be empowered in our new life in Christ Jesus. Because we see here that how um, in Psalms 139, 23, 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I don't know about you. We were born evil, wicked, simple individuals. We are born with a simple nature. Uh, with the works of the flesh in us. But the only way we can crucify the works of the flesh is through by what? Repenting of sin when we sin and obey the word of God. We got to learn how David did. David asked God to create a clean heart of God and bring the right spirit within him. And that's what we have to do, even after being saved through the Spirit of God. We just don't get saved, my brothers and sisters, and then we just saved, and now we just empowered. Yes, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, but what I'm saying is that we have to feast off the Word of God. We got to study the Word of God. We need to hide the Word of God in our hearts. That we sin not against Him. Hide the Word of God in our hearts, because the Word of God tells our hearts to see the all things that's been wicked. And the word of God said, where every strife is, is every evil work. So we see it. That's why we need to ask God to search our hearts. Because sometimes we don't even know what's in our hearts. The word of God said, I have the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And sometimes I've done it myself. I spoke and said things. And I'm not, Lord, have mercy. When the, word, the word of God said, came out of your heart. The word of God says, not what goes into, what comes, what goes into man, the foul man. Because whatever goes within us, we know it goes back out. But what it said, what's come out of the man is what's coming out of the heart. And sometimes people say, I don't know why they said it. I don't know where they get that from. You know, a lot of times as kids, we were coming up. Or even as grown people, people say, I don't know where they get that from. Maybe sometimes special children. The word of God said, even. And time passed. What they did was, whether they sit down or stood up, they said they, they would teach the children. When they, when they got up, when they sit down, when they sit down to eat. And even so how they would even put the scriptures on the forehead. That's why sometimes you see, a lot of times we have frames and scriptures or pictures that are all over the walls. And it's nothing new under the sun because the thing of it is, it was it's very important to keep the word of God before our eyes. The word of God said, God our eye gates and God our, our heart and God our ears. That's why the word of God said, faith come out here and hear by the word of God. Because we hear the word of God, it goes in us. And and the reason, the way it can stay within us is as we obey the word of God and seal it in through by the Holy Spirit. Because we see here, my brothers and sisters, 
Only God knows our heart, like the word of God tells us. Man look at the outer appearance of man, but God look at the heart of man. We can dress up and, and talk a, a nice talk on the outside, but even God, I love Apostle Paul, how he was in bondage in prison, and how he said that he had in its head the preachers preaching, two sets of preachers preaching the same gospel truth, but different moments, some out of contention and strife, and some out of goodwill. But, you know, he said he got overjoyed because the reason why he got overjoyed, he said even they was preaching some to the fish of his bonds while he was in prison. But he got overjoyed because the gospel was still going forth. That's the key. No matter what, as long as it's going forth, the word of God, individually and decree and declare the word of God, even in your life, they may come and, and, and act and do like they want to help you, but they may have the wrong motive. But no matter what, the word of God says us that he will either make that, what? Our enemies and even the enemies of Christ, our footstool. And I can see now that God's what throne is in heaven and the earth is his footstool. And people tell me to keep the devil under our feet. And you can praise and stomp all you want them. But I tell you, when they put a praise on it, you best be better have the word with the praise. <laughs> because the power is in the word of God. Yes, he said praise is God, bless come down. But when we praise him, let's praise him with the word. The word of God said we shall bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in our mouths. He said if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto how are we gonna lift him up? We're not gonna lift him up in the flesh. We're gonna lift him up in the spirit. My brothers and sisters, when we lift him up, like he said, lift up the name of Jesus because it's power in his name. He said, if there's no other name greater than the name of Jesus, power in his name. He said, even in heaven, even in earth, or under the earth, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess what Jesus Christ is all for the glory of God. So we lift up the name of Jesus and we have been given the dominion authority to use his name. That the power. See, everybody use the name of Jesus. They ain't got the authority to use it. That's why I don't come no power. But we remain in the righteous of God, the godly men, women, boys and girls of God. We can decree and declare thing, the word, that thing is the word, and it will be so in Jesus' name, so let's let's make sure, my brothers, our hearts are right, we have the right motive why we do what we do for the glory of God, because we're in a time now that the, the sin for the evil, wicked, dark world, my brothers, we need to store, because I don't know about you, I'm storing as much word I can store up in my heart, so if it come a time I can't pray, intercede for myself, he even says, when come a time he can't pray, for ourselves, but the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us. So now that we know we're born again of the Spirit of God, we need to store up the Word of God in our hearts so the Holy Spirit has something to bring back. Yes, the Holy Spirit knows the Word, but we need to hide, that's why I said hide the Word in the hearts. That's why we need to guard our eye gates, we need to guard our ears, we need to guard our hearts, because we can end up having an evil, wicked, stony heart. And we can even have a deaf ear to hear the voice of God. He says, she knows his voice. And the only way we can know the voice of God and the word of God, we got to be born again of the spirit of God because he's a spiritual being. <laughs> and that's how we communicate to God. We need to pray in the spirit to God. Pray back to God his word. That's that's the language you understand. And that's, what we have, that's why we have to learn the word of God. Because now that we're new creatures in Christ, we need to learn a new language. I've always want to learn Spanish. I haven't learned it yet. But what I'm saying, we want to learn. Some people got so many languages. They can speak two, three, four, five, ten. out. I, I mean, all, we got so many different languages all over the world. But I tell you, we need to learn the language of God. I tell you that. <laughs> so he said, when we look to the hill which come from our help. You know, so obviously when I look to the hill which come from our help, my help coming from the Lord. Why we looking to that hill and our help is coming? Let's be looking with the word. Because that's who he is. <laughs> and he going to respond to his word. My brothers, I perhaps said something to encourage you today through by the word of God. I just want to encourage you to know how you can know with with the surety that you are a blessed man, woman, girl, God. And most of all, let's train up a child that way she's going to get older, she'll not depart in the evolution of the word of God. So they'll know. They'll know. I mean, we got to train it. We got to clean and clear the word. It's power in the word of God. It's too often we want the children to be trained and all these, it's nothing wrong with being in sports. There's nothing wrong with being in social media and the arts. There's nothing wrong with um, having different um, careers and goals in life um, that you want to take. But make sure we don't leave God out of it. We got to have God, the creator of heaven and earth, in our life. And the children's going to need them as well. Because we never know. We need, we need these children to lay hands and pray for us. But good Lord Jesus, if we just get so quick, it's sad. It would be very sad. That we continue to be empowered and be anointed by God and used by God. And we are not thinking about our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our nieces, our nephews, the children, the strangers, and, and all over the world. Being concerned, a reference to their salvation. Knowing that they don't know the way. 
They don't know the way. And just like with Philip the Ethiopian, he said, how can I know without reading that someone teach me? And Philip took time to teach him. So why don't we take time to teach? And some individuals said, well, we now we have children raising children. And some haven't finished school. Some don't know how to read. My mother didn't have a lot of education. My mother, my father had a lot of education. But you got to think about it. My brother and sister, they said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Even during time past, they didn't even have the Bible like we have. Lord have mercy. We will have no excuse when we stand before God for judgment. And time passed. They just had scrolls. They had to listen to the priests and the prophets. They had to listen to the ones that were inspired and God spoke to as to what they said. Thus said the Lord. But glory be to God. We got all kinds of Bibles today, all kinds of virgin, all kinds of technology. I tell you, I remember at church, we had a blind deacon that how that he awed me that he could braille and he would be faithful when he could. He would be faithful for Sunday school and Bible study and worship service. He was blind and he would still come. And that encouraged me that you have someone with that great faith that they were still determined when to know the word of God. Even some individuals that can't even um, hear. Baby, I tried myself one time in life. I got off and I was at church and one of the, the pastor's son, he could not um, hear. And it awed me. He would still come to church. And it just touched my heart. Um, and that's why I get overjoyed. I'm just sharing some things that you to let you know. Then there may be somebody out there that, that realize that that you know how to do sign language. You know how to braille. And may be some individual may have some kind of formative or some of the capacity or maybe a slur learner or whatever it may be. Whatever of knowledge that God is giving you an eye to help in the body of Christ. I took sign language for a period of time. I, and I enjoyed um, the sign language. I didn't continue on, but what inspired me to do that was a young man been at church. It's just he would come to church, but nobody was sign language. So when I see churches, even on um, different social medias, or even doing government speeches, or um, sometimes um, doing investigation, they have individual sign language, and that awed me because they know we need to learn, we need to realize, my brothers and sisters, we need to be a people in the kingdom of God. When God said He wants man to be whole, soul, body, and spirit, He just don't want us to be saved. He wants to be healed physically. He wants us to have the ability to be able to help meet the needs of other mental stabilities of other individuals. So wherever someone may be in their walk in life, we need to meet the needs of the whole man. It's too often we, um, especially those of us who are believers, I've been there, done that myself. We're so concerned about someone being saved, and but then what about them being healed? What about them being delivered? Um, the worst thing that we can do is uh, continue to force the word of God down into an individual, and they're not saved. They're not saved. They can't even understand it, and that's why the word of God tells us the natural man does not understand the things of the of the spirit because they're what they're foolish unto him neither can know because they're spiritual desire and so the key is we need to make sure that we need to create and declare the gospel the foundation is salvation the believing in the gospel by our lord and savior jesus christ um and then they feel through the spirit of god then start the work of imparting knowledge and helping them understand the word of god because we're doing like i said putting the cart before the horse <laughs> we're going backwards it's no way and and i've been given this charge myself nice to minister at the jails and detention homes and the nursing homes nice to go and i know sometimes especially i would go to uh, the prisons and minister um, or the detention home and a lot of time uh, we want to continue to create and declare the word of god but to individuals not say they cannot comprehend it and they cannot understand it. And the reason why I'm sure that the word of God tells us he's not slack concerning his promise. Some men count slacks with long suffering towards us, not willing the inner spirit that we come to a place of repentance. And the reason why he's saying we need to repent is to believe in the gospel because he knows we don't repent of our sin. We cannot even understand. We cannot even believe. That God is who he say he is. We cannot believe in the Son of God. We cannot believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. That what the power of the Holy Spirit has the ability to do in your life and my life. My brother and sister, today, today, am I a blessed man or mama or boy or girl God? We know. I'm not talking about material possessions. I'm talking about are we rich within our salvation? Because we know even the point of time in the word of God that we're saying, um, in closing, and how does a gay man had gay raiment? How they, when he came in dressed the time, how they want to put him at the front, the highest seat, want to put him the head of everybody because of how he fared well, as they say, on the outer appearance. 
and how that man that was a poor man, a bowed raiment, probably filthy, dirty, stinking, probably like he was homeless, had nowhere to go, looked like he probably hadn't bathed in days, whatever the situation may be. And they was like, well, you can sit over there or under my foot if you want to kick. But guess what that poor man, that the man of a bowed raiment, he was more richer than the man, the gay man with raiment, with his idol apparel that people thought, oh, he's so this and that. We need to put him in the front. He had faith. He had faith. The word of God tells us what we're saying by what we're saying by grace through faith, not the works that any man should boast. It's a gift from God. So my brothers and sisters, don't don't allow nobody to judge you because where you live, what you don't have, how you dress, how you smell, or whatever your situation, where your encounter may be at life. It may be someone that may be listening on your cell phone. You may be homeless. Don't worry about it. The all-knowing seeing God said he never sleep nor slumber. He sees you. He knows where you are. Believe in faith. Some may be in the cars, in the marketplace. Some still may be lying in bed. You may not be able to get up. <laughs> and you may say, I'm going to lay here and listen. Wherever you may be, my brother and sister, arise. Arise in the Holy Ghost. Be saved. The word of God tells us today, today is the day of salvation. When we hear his voice, harden not our hearts. The word of God tells us, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, and for the wage of sin is still death, but the gift of God is the gift, gift of God is through eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not only that, he said to confess with our mouth. On the Lord Jesus, believe my heart that God has raised Jesus from dead, thou shalt be saved. For well, a man believe his heart the righteous confession made unto salvation. Let no one tell you that you cannot be saved. He said, We confess our sin, he is faithful. And just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And he's going to cleanse us through by his word. The word of God says, Sanctify us through by the truth of your word. Set us apart for your use, for your honor, your glory, and your praise. My brothers and sisters, only God can do it for you and me. Don't get caught up on the outer parents. I told you I've had opportunity to witness the individuals that were homeless, had different kind of addictions, personal perverse lifestyles, crying out. I was like to you before, a, a drunk deacon one time, and um, medicine to him in the parking lot of the grocery store. He needed money. He told me he wanted medication for, medication for his wife. And I can't say he was lying or not lying. I just did what I could do, but I did ask him about his salvation. He said he could pray his own sinner's prayer. He used to, he was a deacon. And that's why I'm saying stop judging people because you see where they're at. You see people that are drug dealers and prostitutes. People caught up in gangs and bullying people, rapers and incestors and murderers and robbers. All kind of lifestyles. Sin is sin. And I said, God, you see some individuals now. A lot of times people are LGBTQT. But guess what? They are human beings. But guess what? God still loves them. And if they repent of their sin, he will forgive them too. It's no different than a fornicator or adulterer or a liar or a cheater or a thief. No different than a murder. No different than when we be a glutton. We eat too much. The word of God says, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And they that destroy these temples, he will destroy God. We host the Holy Spirit. And that's why when we see, when we see someone struggling with drug addictions or sin in their life or immorality, we need to pray for them. Because we know some of them. Some of them are in a backslidden state. Yes, he said he's married to the backslider, but they don't repent and be reconciled back into the body of Christ where he had already predestined. Their sentence will be hell. Once saved, always saved. Get over it, people. Sin is sin. God has given us a free will. He says, the word of God tells us, the word of God says that we don't want to retain him in our knowledge. Retain his knowledge in us and walk in obedience to his word. He himself will give us over to a vow of affection. Let us go over to a reprobate mind. Then we end up with blaspheming God. The word of God says, living in freedom in Christ Jesus, he does not make us obey him. He gives us a free will. Because he knows, especially when you're born again in the spirit of God, we have the ability to obey him because we've been empowered through by the Holy Ghost. That's what Apostle Paul said. What, what Peter said when he preached, he said, in the 3,000 plus souls, God say, repent. How can we be saved? Repent and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And because I've been Repentance and being baptized in the Holy Ghost, the same promise to our children, those who are far off, and whosoever God to call can be saved. My brothers, we no longer can use the excuse of generational curses when Jesus Christ Himself was a made a curse for you and I. <laughs> I thank God for Jesus. And I blessed man, woman, boy, girl, God. I want you to see the blessings of the Word of God. The only ones that are truly blessed are the ones that are walking in the righteousness of God, the ones that are obeying the word and commands of God. Those are the those are the blessed ones. Because you realize you can be happy. You can be a happy man even when you may be afflicted or firm. We can still be happy because our faith. It's just like the woman with the issue of her faith made a whole. 
So what I'm saying, my brothers, the word of God tells us, men are the affliction of the right, but he will deliver them out of law. So that's because you may be afflicted. It doesn't mean that you're not the I thank God the affliction doesn't keep us from being the right God. I thank God that infirmities <laughs> doesn't keep us from being the right of God. Jesus Christ himself, glory be to God, when he was crucified with the thorns in his head and the nails in his hands and the feet and the piercing inside and the stripes on his back, he was still the son of the living God. <laughs> and spite of, he was afflicted, he was affirmed. But he was still the right from God. And he died. The word of God is about to share the blood and no remission of sin. That's why he said, for he committed his own Bible, yet sinners, Christ died for us. I tell you, in his suffering, <laughs> I tell you, in this suffering, glory be to God. When, like I said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, all he's done, my soul cries out, hallelujah, because I thank God for not only saving me, I thank him for healing me and delivering. And I, glory to God, I thank God for empowerment by the Holy Ghost that I can stand on the promise of God's word in faith. He said that just shall walk by faith, not by sight. No matter what I see in my eye, no matter what I feel in my body, no matter what I think in my mind, I'm going to stand on the promise of God's word. My brothers, says we need to get in power. We need, to, we need to armor up with the word of God so there come a day that we don't have technology. Today we don't have our Bibles. Today we don't have nobody to talk to to call. We can also be called on God because he, his mind is never been. He said, who's ever call upon him? Not only be, shall be saved, but he said he will answer. You need to try it. That's, a lot of times we keep calling each other. Sometimes I can't get nobody on the phone. Like I said, I looked all over, couldn't find nobody. But I tell you one thing, I know who is always available. That God that said he never sleep no summer. That God said, I am blessed. I'm a blessed woman of God. You're a blessed woman or man of God. And boy and girl of God. If we what? If we walk in the gods and the righteousness of God. My brothers and sisters, I pray I've said something to encourage you today. I just want to stir you up in your mind to let you know. Don't look at blessing as being a material possession because a lot of people today, due to the prophecy being fulfilled, there are pestilences in the land, there are famines and sickness and diseases in the land. I mean, come from north, south, east, and west. The people, are, what? Wildfires and floods and hurricanes and earthquakes and tsunamis and the violence and the crime is, is like never before. And that means that we should see the soon coming King of Judge is soon to return. Even in the time of old, when the, because of the sin in the earth, that he destroyed the first earth. He said, this time, it would not be by water, but it would be by fire. And the same way he rained down fire brimstone from heaven on the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of selfishness and immorality. And consumed it in and everything that was in it and purified its ground. You know, I said, we'll stand on holy ground. I tell you what, <laughs> glory be to God. That was a time of purification for that period. But guess what? No matter what fires we see in the earth and flood, what do we see? It's not it yet. But we need to be getting ready. You know how we used to play? Red, hide and go see. Red and not here I come. I tell you, even how they want to know when the sign is coming. It's only in the plan and purpose of the Father to know when the sign is coming is going to be. But I tell you what, the word of God is letting us see. There are signs and wonders here in the earth is letting us know. We don't know exactly when he's coming, but we need to be ready. We need to be ready because he is on his way back. And, and not only be ready, we need to live in the here and now. Too often, let's stop waiting. I'm telling you, I'm going to come off here. I got to encourage my brother and sister. There's too often people waiting to get their heaven to be healed. Tell them, when I get into heaven, I'm going to put on my crown. I'm going to put on my white. We used to sing that song, we should wear a crown or go on a crown. My feet hit dying and all this kind of stuff, white robe. I tell you, I, I love them songs we sung when we were coming up. I mean, I love the songs today. But they had me. I said, my lot of years now. And some of them songs in years come to my spirit. I said, but so then I need it now. Them songs that got me in the power. So what I'm saying, we want to get concerned about what we're going to put on. I'm going to see mama. I'm going to see daddy. I tell you what, we got to prepare like now. We're preparing now to live in the here and now now. As kingdom citizens in the kingdom of God. Why not live a life? We said, Lord, let your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let's live like King Kids <laughs> here on earth. You want to wait to get to heaven to get healed. You want to wait to get to heaven to stop crying. You want to get to heaven uh, just to, to be separated from people. I'm going to live in the joy of the Lord here on earth. The word of God said the joy of the Lord is our strength. The kingdom of God, joy and peace and righteousness and the Holy Ghost. When we got the Holy Ghost, we can be at peace and we can be at happy. When, they, when other people seem like they're falling apart and the world coming to an end, we can still have the joy of the Lord. 
Because we made up in our mind. We're going to trust the Lord all our heart. We're not going to lean to our own and send all our ways. We're going to acknowledge him. And he's going to direct our path. And he's going to direct our path as to how we can remain the blessed man, woman, boy, girl of God. By being walking on obedience to the word of God. He said, baby, keep heart and mind stable. Shake heaven perfect peace with the trust in him. I don't know nothing to do but trust in it. I just want you to trust in it. Trust in God to keep you. He's able to save you. He's able to heal and deliver you and empower you. And it's not just to be saved and empowered unto ourselves. It's for a work. There's souls that need to be saved. The word of God tells us. The harvest comes and the labors of few. Praise the Lord of harvest. He raised up labors in his vineyard. I'm talking about committed ones, like Apostle Paul said, that we speak boldly what we ought to say as the Holy Spirit gives us the utterance. As when the church began, when they came on one accord, and they started speaking in tongues, and the Spirit, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And that's my prayer for you and myself today, that we learn how to pray. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to pray in and through us what He wants to pray. And watch things manifest. Even when we don't know. <laughs> we just pray. The word of God said. We need to. Men should always pray and not think. Pray all kind of prayers and supplication. With persevering. Watch as well as pray. It's too often we, we want to pray with our eyes closed. We want to pray and not know. We want to pray about something going on in the world. But not know what's going on in the world. He said be in the world but not other world. Be in the world know what's going on in the world. But don't live according to the world. That's why he said by the ungodly counsel. But pray. That he rule and reign here on earth. As it is in heaven. And he's going to rule here on earth through by the born again believers. Because he said he'd go away. And he said not to come host with leading God even his disciples, all truth, and even us. But we would do even greater works. So he's saying, I'm not coming to the earth. You know, we want to send him everywhere. Lord, I got to get off and send him everywhere. And send him to us here. Lord, go to the jail, go to the hospital, go down the street, go to Big Ma house, go to Big Pop house, go over here, go over there. We need to go as men. The world is filled with too many falls of Christ. For somebody not to go into the hospital, the jails, the prisons, the detention home, go in the streets, go next door. Uh, the glory be to God. Start in our own self first. <laughs> Making sure we're saved now. Making sure we're saved. Work inside out. Start with ourselves. Then start within our home. Then work out in the community. Work out in our jobs, in our churches. Because too often, everybody, there's a fellowship. The people in the body of Christ as believers are saved. But when it comes to the fellowship, everybody's not safe in the fellowship. He said that if we in town dwell together, he's going to do the separating. He not going to just leave all the saved folks never. Guess what? What work will we have? What we reason we have to use our spiritual gifts? That's what the spiritual gifts are. To edify the body of Christ. He said he will add to the household that is such be saved. But then there's the equipment process. He said, men are calling for your chosen days. He called, he equips. He's not, Jesus not coming from heaven and equip us in the earth that become believers in the body of Christ like he did the disciples. He's no longer in the flesh. He has left that assignment to you and I. And that's why um, I love the stir of the gifts. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you will seek God's what your gifts are and be equipped. Because the soon coming king and judge is soon to return. And will he find faith in the work? And will I sign it? My prayer to God, Lord, don't let me leave this earth until my sign is complete. I don't know when. Jesus in like 30 some years. I don't wait past that. I almost done double Jesus. But I don't know. So, so what I'm saying, we don't know. But we know this. God has work to do. Will we be his hands? Will we be his feet? Will we be his eyes? Will we be his ears? Will we be his mouthpiece? They create and declare the word of God because the power is in the word of God. And I thank you, my brothers and sisters, for coming on today. I'm going to close out a prayer with you. But I pray that I've said something encourages always that you will bless them and continue to pray for me. And I'm going to continue to pray for you that God glory will reign in this earth in the north, south, east, and west. That revivals will break out like never before. That um, we will tap the city upside down through by the crane and clear another gospel. In every avenue we can, not just on social media, on the phone line, emails. Um, even our, we need ground troops too. Um, here on the ground, we need to go get out our homes, get out our buildings, um, go out, not walking in the spirit of fear. For God's not giving the spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind, and that sound mind come through Christ Jesus. But the way we can go forth in the boldness of God is definitely through by living a life that's pleasing to it in His sight and realize that it's He that's speaking in and through us, not for our glory, but for glory of God our Father, which is in heaven. 
Oh, I ask the Holy Father in heaven, I give you glory, I give you honor and praise. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that came on today, those coming on later. I thank you even for the representation of those that are on or coming on later. Their families, they may not be listening to this social media message on today, but I pray God that I encourage and inspire and stir up those that are listening, that they will learn to pray and fast more, seek you through your word. And that they will uh, decree and declare the gospel in and out of season. That not only that, God, we'll walk in faith of our calling. That we'll walk in the faith of our relationship with you. That we will walk, God, in courage today, know, knowing, definitely knowing how that we can say that I'm a blessed man, woman, boy, girl, God. And because we're blessed, um, we need to be a blessing to others that we can lead and guide and direct them to you. By letting our light so shine before men, they should see our good works and should be glorified, Father, which are in heaven. Meaning, as you blessing us, God, or have blessed us, you want to be a blessing to others. And most of all, through our salvation, now that we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, we should have the love, mercy, and compassion towards other souls that do not know you. Do not know you as Lord and Savior and Redeemer, that our heart will um, hunger and thirst after your righteousness no more, that our heart will thirst after um, going to make sure that those that don't know the way, that's trying to find a way, that we will go into the hedge and the highways and compel them to surrender to you. That we will be long suffering towards them. We will show forth the compassion of you, Lord God. That we will um, minister, minister into the lives, the truth gospel of your word. Because we know, God, that there's no power within ourselves. It's through by the power of the Holy Spirit of your word that transforms the hearts and the mind of men. So we thank you, Lord God, from the north, south, east, and west for preparing our hearts, mind of men, women, and boys and girls. And no matter which avenue the gospel is decreed and clan, they have an ear to hear and an eye to see, God, that you are God, the signs of one to still follow in, in faith that they will only believe in the God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that they can too really be saved. They can be healed. They can be delivered. They can be empowered. They can be protected, Lord God, because of so much domination, the evil, wicked works of darkness. We come against the spirit of darkness in the world, the evil, wickedness, Lord God, that bombard those that are running for their lives. The men are running for their lives because they're running in fear. But we pray, God, that in and running, that we as the people of God will be there. Even if you have to release your ministry of angels to minister to the spirits, that they will call upon your name. But we know when they call upon your name, God, you promise us that you call upon the name Lord shall be saved. Not only shall be saved, but who shall call upon you or else. So we are praying, God, even for those now, many that are in the prison, the jails, the detention homes, who are homeless, many that have different addictions, caught up in cults and seances and all kind of evil, wicked works of darkness. Many want to be free. Many want to be set free. But they feel like there's no hope for them. But we know the hope is in Christ Jesus. We thank you even now, God. Touch the great, my brothers, it's all over the world. That you raise up an army, an army of warriors and saints that's not afraid and a fearful of the battle that's be before us. The battle that we're in now, the battle you allowed us to conquer and overcome. The battles that we're in now, the battles that are before us. How we know God, you said no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper and tongue shall rise up against us in judgment. That thou shalt condemn. And that's the heritage of the service of the Lord for those that are in the righteous of you, God. And we thank you for it even now. We thank you for the word of God, the people of God, and the anointing of God. And we thank you to God, must not leave out those in the backslidden state, that they will repent of their sin, that they be restored. Those that are not saved, that they will repent and be saved. Those of us that are saved, that if we find ourselves uh, being more carnal man and spiritual, more the carnal man than the spiritual man, that we will seek you the more and grow more in spiritual maturity, that we may have our brothers and sisters, those in a time of need, for that such a time as this, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brother and sister. Thank you so much for coming on today. Love you to life. As I always say, God has a plan and a purpose for you here in the earth. And please seek God for that plan and purpose and fulfill it. And he's going to allow you to able to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because yes, God has need of you and he has need of me. In Jesus Christ's name, I give him glory. Amen and amen. God bless you all.